We continue our look at Peter Bruegel and we'll notice as we begin part two that the subject matter does turn uh, a little bit darker around this time period, but we do need to be reminded that there's uh, a lot of wars that are occurring in the northern part of Europe and there's also a lot of religious persecution that's occurring between the religious nobility uh, and a lot of the people who are kind of shifting over to either Calvinism or Protestantism in this area of the world. Uh, again, so when we look at this, the subject matter makes makes sense when we think about it historically and uh, I mentioned the name Hieronymus Bosch before. This is a very much a, a Hieronymus Bosch style of, of work and, and uh, you can even see some of the this uh, a, a lot of similarities between the two but continuing with what makes Peter Bruegel so famous are these wonderful details that we see and and within this painting uh, this is no exception down in the bottom right corner is, is actually where we're looking here and uh, one of the things I, I think is so remarkable we have this major battle occurring with all of these different bodies going this way and that and even this horse kind of riding over in the army of death uh, over there in the far right side but in the midst of all of this you'll notice that there's a, a, a backgammon board on the floor and again some playing cards and uh, this atmosphere of, of game and, and even chance and uh, maybe this is a reflection of Bruegel's ideology towards life and death at this time that there is this aspect of chance that is occurring as to who's living and dying and uh, maybe it's very appropriate that we actually do see these games uh, as part of the composition itself. Another wonderful detail is the musician over in the right corner. Moving forward, the Tower of Babel from 1563, there's two paintings that he does along the subject matter. This is probably the more famous of the two, uh, and this is an absolutely wonderful painting for all of the little details. And again, when we look at this, you, you really kind of have to look at the construction as being uh, directly influenced by Roman construction. We know that uh, Bruegel went around uh, Europe uh, and did travel to Rome, so this would be uh, not something that would be that far off place and and the wonderful thing about this is we have over on the far right corner the construction of it and, and the observation of modern construction techniques that Bruegel actually did uh, we have this wonderful town over on the left side as well and probably the most famous detail uh, down in the bottom left corner of this king figure uh, actually going forward with his people and uh, this is Nimrod very famously but could also be an allusion to uh, the monarchy that was ruling over the Netherlands at the time uh, and we have all of these people busily working or bowing down in front of this person and uh, it's so wonderful because of the majesty that the tower creates even though we know uh, the Tower of Babel eventually falls uh, uh, when we look at it it does such a great job of making the people look so incredibly small uh, and almost of little significance like little insects crawling around even this mighty king uh, pales in comparison to this giant architecture and again just kind of a further reminder of of the point that of, of the story of the Tower of Babel that one should not uh, try to emulate or get as high as God uh, in this instance we can feel that from uh, all aspects of the composition. Peter Bruegel also did a series based on uh, the seasons, and this is Hunters in the Snow from December, January. Uh, and, and this is another interesting painting to look at right after looking at the Tower of Babel because we have kind of a similar compositional design where on the bottom left corner we have the closest aspect of, of the detail. Uh, and that's kind of an unusual place to have that. And as we kind of start from there uh, we work our way around all of the composition and we kind of wander ourselves off into the to the hills and this is uh, one of the ideas with this painting is that we would start with these pack of dogs and these hunters in the left corner and then uh, perhaps venture out into the snow as they would uh, off on their hunting and again this wonderful perspective that we have uh, moving along the harvesters from August and September uh, and the harvesters is a great piece because you'll notice there is many people not harvesting uh, even more so than there are actually harvesting this is this wonderful occasion we have of uh, these peasants kind of taking a break underneath the, the shade of a tree and enjoying uh, some food if you will 
uh, again, this is the, the the peasants are really one of the major factors that we get from Bruegel, uh, and really his enjoyment, as I mentioned before in lecture one, he's known as the peasant Bruegel, uh, not because he was a peasant himself, but he was also uh, someone who would dress up like a peasant so that he could go to these activities and really get a first-hand understanding of, of what the activities actually were, uh, kind of, you know, playing the role as much as anything. This is the Sermon of St. John the Baptist, and, and I love this painting too because when we look at this, we're reminded uh, uh, that the port that we're in, the Netherlands, and, and that this is an area uh, where we would actually have people coming and going from all over the world. And as we kind of look through the crowd, this is the, the, the wonderful, fun thing about it is uh, just looking at the different headwares and that we see that uh, over uh, uh, next to the tree on the left side, <clears throat> We have someone that could be perceived as being uh, from the Middle East. And then uh, uh, what we have in, in the lower ground, we have one of these broad straw hats that perhaps we could see uh, someone from the Far East occupying as well. And as we look through all of these different throngs and all of these different types of people, uh, again, this is the wonderful idea behind it. Uh, the peasants dance, moving closer to the subject matter that we have most famous from Bruegel's life. Uh, and again, this is this wonderful painting where it seems very chaotic, but if we really kind of focus, we can see uh, the, the, this line of, of people kind of descending off into the distance, that there is actually a vanishing point there. Uh, and, and he almost uses this vanishing point as an anchor, and we have all of these wonderful peasants kind of in and around dancing. Uh, I love that all these peasant, peasants seem so plump and, and alive, and that it's very hard to find uh, a skinny one in the group, if you will. Bruegel does this wonderful job of kind of making all of these people seem so wonderful and, and joyful and making us really appreciate kind of this more a simple approach to life uh, rather than the, the complexity of, of, of uh, what was actually occurring around him. A little bit farther along, the peasant's wedding, and this is a, a wonderful painting to look at again for the wonderful details, of, you know, things along the line that they're serving this soup porridge, if you will, on the door uh, uh, of a house as much as anything. And you'll notice in the distance uh, that open doorway and everybody actually coming through through. Again, we see these musicians and we see a lot of the aspects of life uh, that you would you would see if you were someone just in and amongst these peasants uh, rather than trying to keep create this overly idyllic situation, uh, what Bruegel is actually doing is he's going through uh, and very much creating this wonderful reality that's a little bit fictitious, I imagine, and all the warmth and charm, but uh, again, very much an enjoyable thing. And there at the, the very bottom, we have one of my favorite details, this child uh, with a very, very large hat and this wonderful feather sticking out of it, uh, licking its fingers and cleaning out a bowl, as you would imagine a child would do uh, at any point in history, lending all the way forward uh, to the present. And again, this is a wonderful reminder of some of the other artists that have influenced him. And again, when we think of Norman Rockwell and we think of uh, the way he perceives and projects uh, uh, people in this kind of similar way, uh, it is this wonderful aspects of life, this everydayness that we can all experience uh, throughout time that Bruegel has captured uh, in his work.